DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. It's time for Tuesday Night Live Chat with Brian S. Red and John Young. All right, if we are working, we are live. And yes, I'm gonna have to try to figure out what's causing that, that noise in the background. I don't hear a noise. Yeah, so and I and when you talk, there's no noise, but only when I talk. Because there's nothing wrong on my end. It's you. It's, it's me. It's always you. It's me. I don't it's know. It's not me, it's you. It, 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 I'm, I'm gonna take this personally. Good evening, uh, good evening everyone. Welcome. Sorry for the delay, but uh, we are here. Thank you for waiting, those of you in the uh, chat room patiently waiting. Uh, my name is Brian, and this is John, and uh, we're live. <laughs> no matter what, any noise I make. Okay, so there's got to be a set. So carry on a conversation by yourself. I'll nod. Right. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> this will be a great show. This might be one of our best ones ever. Yeah, so we're talking music and gear tonight is that I, the topic I, we're I, going well, on i think we're going to try to hit a lot of different things because this is going to be one of those nights where we're not going to stay on any given topic because you know there's just too many things that we could go off on and 
it's like, you know, we just haven't had an off-the-rails night, and I figured tonight would be that because of all the chaos. Off-the-rails. Yeah. So, I like so, it. Speaking of off-the-rails, I got to, sp- got to talk to our friend Jay Brannon today. Oh, Jay, how's Jay doing? Uh, Jay, it sounds like it sounds like he's good. He's he's getting excited. I think for February, you know that he'll he's going to be coming uh, with us to the DJ and TV event we're going to be doing in Las Vegas. And nice. of course, one of the things we, we're going to have at the show is that chill room, which is basically you know has it's like you know Jay Brandon playground written right on the, the doorway right. almost as as you're coming through. And I. I do, I had mentioned it to someone that you know we were going to be doing that and that uh, Jay was going to be part of the event. It seems that Jay has a a, a known a known trait for being a little conversational when it comes to things like yes. this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Jay is a one man show. Just wind him up and and let him go. He uh, he can riff for days on this stuff, and he's got some really interesting ideas. Yeah, he does have a, a, a different take, and 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 I'm not saying it different in a bad way. No, it's just that, not at all. You know, it's it's you know, really, you know, kind of all three of us have been into the industry for a, a very long time and doing a, a lot of different things, and it's interesting how somewhat similar in age, and yet we see things in some ways so completely differently, or maybe we see things somewhat similar, but from different angles and with a different perspective. Right. As, well, as, I mean, yeah, Jay. Well, I mean, it's interesting with Jay. He was a musician for one. I mean, that's that's how he started, and then he ended up managing a like a a hospitality cruise thing, where he was also DJing on it, and that's how he got into DJing. It was uh, I don't know what the cruise was. I, I don't quite understand exactly how it all worked, but it was some kind of cruise that you go on, and then there was a DJ as well. And then they'd hold events on this cruise. And that's how he got his feet wet in this. And that's how he started in the business. And, um, yeah, he's just got some really interesting ideas. It's part of where he uh, he is in his market. And Temecula, it's wine country. If you're not familiar with it, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it, it's like Napa Valley that's on fire right now. But yeah. it's, it's the Southern California version of that. It, it's relatively new. Uh, for the vineyards down there, but it's a destination. So people want to go down there and get married at vineyards, and a lot of times it's during the day, and and they're they're very um, what word do I want to use? Um, they're um, maybe high end events, but at the same time, they're 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 not epic long events like you and I are used to doing. Right. Yeah. You know, he, he's he's doing like four hour total events, uh, but but he's he's commanding a very good salary for it, and, and he, he's he's working hard right now. I know that he's a very busy guy right now, but yeah, he's he's got a real interesting take on how it goes. And then the whole pioneer thing, mm-hmm. and you know, getting uh, the um, the whole feedback from that crew. He is different from anyone else at Pioneer too. Yes. If you talk to anybody else at Pioneer, they're club guys or they're EDM guys or whatever, and he's not that guy. He's approaching it from a completely different angle. So he's an interesting character. Definitely. He's been a really good friend of mine since since the day we met. It's it's kinda neat. We just we clicked right away. And that was back in two thousand eight. Hmm. So so he's he's a good guy. And in yeah. 2008 doesn't sound like it's that long ago until you start realizing that. You know, yeah, 11 years ago. Well, yeah, I mean, I go back and look at what I was doing in my life when I started doing these YouTube videos. That was that was a that was a lifetime ago. Oh, it was sure. a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. Shooting a so. shooting a completely different, you know, the 640 by 480 SD camera type things. That, that's right. Similar. Yeah. Some of those first videos, it's like, wow, they've come a long way since then. Yeah, it was all experimental, but mm-hmm. it was fun. It was punk, and I still kind of look at it that way. But uh, yeah, yeah, he's 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 a heck of a guy, and he uh, he's he's really got a, a cool take on this stuff. He sees things differently than most people do. He's an artist. Mm-hmm. He really is. And uh, it's funny if you would meet his wife. 
Michelle couldn't be two different people. Hmm. She's she's absolutely wonderful, but she's calm and she's sweet, and 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 she tells Jay, "Shut up, Jay." <laughs> yeah, it's that's her thing. Jay, stop putting putting the sign up when I'm trying to take your picture. Put your hand down. It's almost like his mother, you know. But yeah. You know, it would almost be worth you know paying for her plane ticket to come to Vegas if she would just you know be there to shut up, Jay. Yeah, get that, that. yeah, she's very good at telling them to shut up. And then getting that on on you know getting the audio of that so that way we could drop it in the show. She's just the sweetest though. No, I mean, but, you know, she she reminds me of Lori a lot. It's 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 kind of the same. I mean, mm-hmm. you're a lot calmer than Jay. Imagine if you were really hyper and Lori just said, "John, shut up." Yeah, it's just, the same thing. Just don't, don't, don't go there. No, I, so. I get that. I get that. So, so a few weeks back, we had a show, uh, Brian, where you and Jay, of course, were doing. We did that uh, that timer thing. Yeah, and it was it's been interesting as people have still been finding that show and the response from people who have absolutely loved that show. Oh, he's fun. Yeah, it, it was. And for those of you who missed the show, we did a night where we had I think ten topics, and we started a timer. I would throw the topic out, start the timer, and I think did you get was it four minutes? total I, yeah i think it was four minutes yeah. yeah so we have this timer clicking away in the corner and the guys have four minutes to discuss this back and forth and i at first when i when we came up with the idea i was figuring jay's gonna go three and a half minutes and give you about 30 seconds <laughs> jay he a, stuck to it he's in he, the room by the way he says hi yeah jay did such a he, he did such a great job i mean he's he's talking to again and and then it's you know to a two to a one two and then Right. right. No, he was he was dead on it. He I mean, was, he he, he might have gone three or four seconds over a few times, but but he was on it. Oh, Jay, we've been talking about you for the last you know twenty some minutes here. You know, yeah, so, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was that was a fun show. We'll have to do that again. I'm trying to figure out because uh, somebody mentioned music, and that was an area in which I think that we could have some fun with is to mm-hmm. see how we could tie in the music and and make it so it's. That uh, that type of show, but that'll be something we'll figure out. Well, I mean, that's something that I've always felt has been missing from these shows. Is everybody wants to talk about gear, and as interesting as equipment is, it's like carpenters talking about hammers. Talk about the house you built, you know. Mm-hmm. That's that's what we don't talk about uh, at the shows, and that's what I always felt has been, has been missing from the shows. And the type of music that you hear blurring out of the booths at the shows typically isn't. Uh, music that a mobile DJs can identify with, or even music lovers can identify with. Quite frankly, it's nothing that I really care to listen to. Mm-hmm. When you talk to anybody like Jay, for instance, or or Howie, or even Robin, anybody in the room, we're talking about all kinds of music, and it's interesting, John. And I think you and I have had this conversation, and I understand that I'm probably unique, but feels like that it's very rare in this business to have a DJ who's also a music lover. They, they like to DJ for some reason. They like to present, but when it comes to the music part, they're not really into it any more than the average uh, customer is. And that's weird to me. I'm a complete music nerd. Mm-hmm. Jay is as well. Jay covers areas that I don't um, but I cover areas that he does it and it's same with Howie you know, we all kind of have our niche and and uh, it's it's interesting to, to talk to folks like that I really enjoy talking to to people you know like Jay and Howie uh, about music it's fun yeah it, it definitely is to hear a different perspective and in in Jay's case coming from a different market you and I are different markets certainly but not uh, there's not as much differentiation between what you and I do compared to going and talking to a Scott Carroll down in Florida or uh, Jay out in Scott Florida. Scott actually really knows this stuff um, I've talked to Scott about you know some of the stuff that's was going on down there like the freestyle and such on the after shows wow this guy knows his stuff with that Miami scene more, more than I know mm-hmm um, Jay, on the other hand, is uh, actually from Boston. So he was really into that whole scene. And there was a huge scene in Boston. 
back then. I mean, the band Boston, uh, the Cars came out of Boston. A lot of rock came out of Boston. And uh, that's kind of where he cut his teeth as a musician, was in Boston. So, And that, of course, is going to influence a lot of the 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 tastes and stylings. And, and I think that's one of the... The interesting things watching younger DJs, you mentioned this, the the things we hear at the DJ shows, you know, the inch, inch, inch coming from the stage. And it's yeah. like, yeah, what, why are, what, why is this music being played? I mean, is anybody really enjoying this music? I mean, yeah, people are, are moving to it a little bit, but is it moving because there's a beat? Is it moving because they, they like what they're hearing? Or is it just something that, well, I can stand here and look stupid, or I can pretend to enjoy what's going on? Jay and I used to play this game at the shows, just sitting in the bar. We haven't done it in years, but we used to do this thing where we would rattle off a, a song title, and it could be anything at all, just random. Somebody would just start. Like, Jay would say, Jerry Rafferty, Baker Street. And then I would say, um, I don't know, England Dan and John Ford Colby uh, really want to see you tonight. We were, like, programming. Like, if it was a radio, what would you follow it up with? Mm-hmm. You know, or if it was a dance floor, what would you follow it up with? And we would make it make it flow. You know, and we'd build to different things. We'd we'd start in the seventies and build to the nineties, or we'd start in, in in the two thousands and you know build to the eighties or whatever. And then if somebody threw a song out there that we felt like wasn't working, we'd say, "I've cleared the floor. You blew it. It start all over again. <laughs> start again." <laughs> yeah, we play this game, and and we would have other people. Like, oh, what are you doing? It's like, oh, we're playing this game. And they try to join in. They totally couldn't hang with it. And these are some pretty heavy hitters, you know, in, in the industry. They totally couldn't hang. Or they didn't even know the songs we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, what song is that? It's like, are you kidding me? Are you kind of a big deal and you don't know the song? Yeah, it's it's that kind of, kind of geekdom that I enjoy. Yes, you do. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's what I like. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's why I got into this, you know. Uh, yeah, we were having a conversation earlier today um, because last night um, I had uh, uh, Stacy, uh, Stacy Hawk, uh, Caroline last night, and Stacy produce puts together some mixes. She really does prep on her music, getting her things ready to go, and she likes to put a set together in advance, so she's she can go into the club and actually have that 20 minute set pretty much all done and just perform, you know, okay, cue mm-hmm. points, everything's lined up. She can do that. So she's going through and she's, she showed that uh, her SoundCloud page. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, how many mobile DJs, you know, is, is SoundCloud really used for anything beyond showing other DJs how good I am? Yeah, exactly. And, I- and, and again, nothing, nothing against what Stacy or anyone else who's doing it. It's just Jay mentions here in the chat room that the reason why we, they play the type of music they play at the DJ shows is they're trying to there's a showing off factor to other DJs. I, I I really wonder, have we taken that type of music that people really truly yeah, I suppose there's fifty thousand people in Spain that's that are trying to dance to it or something at one of these festivals, <laughs> but I mean realistically, <clears throat> if those people aren't high or drunk, are they really enjoying? It? Enjoying that? What's well, going on? I, I don't it, know. It's not that someone wouldn't enjoy it. It's just that this this crowd definitely isn't feeling it. And uh, I, I mean, it's the toughest demographic to play for. A, because a lot of these guys, like I said before, aren't really into music. They're really not. They're there. They like the business part of it. They they like uh, the, the 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 technical part of it but they're not into the, the artistic part of it as much. They want to be told how to perform. They want to go to these different meetups and, and be taught how to present and how to tell a story and, and all that. I don't care about any of that, man. I want to play music, you know? And, and I'm probably a minority. And it's interesting when I do run into people who, who feel the same way I do. Like Andy Crampton and in the UK, you know Andy. Mm-hmm. Andy's like me. He he's into it too, and so is Nigel. They're they're both very into music, and we we are into different things, but they are very into the music part of it, and and they're fun to talk to. But but that's a rarity to run in, for me to run into people like that at DJ trade shows. Yeah, because most people are either interested in in the things I mentioned, or we're in Vegas. Let's go to strip clubs. It's one or the other, you know. So. 
I don't know. I like going to Steak and Shake. Yeah, Steak and Shake's nice. And it's right, it's right in the casino. So, oh, is it? Yeah, it's. Really oh, that's right. right. It is. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. So that'll be that'll be an important thing. Yeah, I just I, I, I that whole music thing is just is kind of scratching my head a little bit at the, at that. As Michael, my sixteen year old, is putting together his music and his sets and different things that he's doing. I can he he's using top forty or at least known songs. You know, he's taking some throwbacks from the eighties and nineties and he's mixing them in and creating creating a set that way. And then I I uh, follow on our channel uh, DJ Kilma. Kilma's an EDM DJ. And she's out of Winnipeg, and she does a lot of the festivals and different things. And I, I see what, you know, the kind of things she's doing and some of the, the videos that she's put up where she's performing and, and doing her thing. I just, I, I can't wrap my head around that that side of the thing because, yeah, there's a little variation between this and, cha, and, cha, and that, and cha, and cha, but there's not, it isn't a, some of the magic of music, I think, is is the story that the lyrics are are saying and then how the music accompanies the lyrics to be able to to draw that emotion out compared to just a uncha 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 going all night long and and maybe that's just me getting old and <laughs> no it's it's i don't know i think that you know for me and, and it's it, it is what it is and and i don't think it's me per se i think it's just kind of the way things are going but I really did follow whatever happened to be popular in music up until probably about five years ago. And something changed. I don't know what, but I couldn't find any music that I really enjoyed that was new anywhere. There was a time when I would just get really bored with, you know, what was on, what was going on in America and what I was hearing. So I would go to the UK and I would see what's on their charts and I'd love it, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'd see what was on their dance charts and I really liked it and I couldn't believe this stuff wasn't crossing over or I'd look at Germany or I'd look at, um, you know, Sweden or I'd look at Italy or anywhere but here and I, or Australia. Oh my gosh, there was wonderful stuff going on in Australia. Uh, now I can't look anywhere and find anything that I dig. Um, and, and maybe I'm getting old, but I think there's just this uh, homogenized thing going on in the industry that's just kind of kicked the, the whole, I, I, I guess, there, there's, there's no risk-taking in music. No one's trying anything new. They're all trying to sound like everybody else. They're playing it safe. It's the best way I can describe it, and it's incredibly boring. Well, you think about it, the the recent songs that have been hot on on Billboard charts. You had um, Old Town Road, which had a unique a unique sound uh, mm. to a point uh, compared to a lot of the things that are coming across. It wasn't a Sean Menendez type song. It wasn't a Justin Bieber song or what have you. It had a a semi unique sound for for that. Then you can you, you went into uh, Lizzo's uh, Lizzo's song that uh, has just been really hot and just absolutely killed on the um, at the weddings and school dances this fall specifically the weddings is the part that was a yeah. surprising for for me at yeah, that level it's been big. and it it also had a a a little bit more of a sassy uh sound compared to some of the the homo homogenized sounds that are coming out of the you know the typical female singers that that have been coming out here recently it wasn't a selena gomez type song I saw something very interesting today, and uh, I thought it was funny. Uh, what's I don't even know how to say the cat's name, and this is terrible. Is it Ed Ed Sheeran? Is that his name? Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran is Ed okay. Sheeran. See, that's how. Yeah, much I that's care okay. About. As long as you get Benny Goodman pronounced properly, you're okay for your age. Yeah, and, and Huey Lewis. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Ed Sheeran, right? Sheeran. Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, and Katy Perry. Um, Prince mentioned them in, in his uh, memoirs that he was writing when he died. He said he couldn't stand them. <laughs> and no one likes their music, and everyone should stop forcing us to listen to it because no matter how much you force us to listen to it, we're still not going to like it. He was that harsh of a critic about it. Uh, 
I thought that was very interesting and telling. And and I, I, I know what he means. And he was kind of doing his own thing for the last 20, 25 years or whatever, where it wasn't really anything mainstream hit. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. He had his, you know, nearly 20 years of, you know, busting the charts and doing all this stuff. And then he kind of went and did something a little different. He could. And it was up to him. Um, but it's boring. It's homogenized. It's nothing that perks your ears up and says, ooh, that's different. So then, I, was, uh, I was watching this um, documentary. I will add this. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Motown. It was called The Making of Motown. And it was on Showtime. It's new. And it's narrated or kind of hosted or whatever. Um, it, it's Motown as told by Barry Gordy and Smokey Robinson mm. sitting in the original Hitsville USA building talking about this stuff. It's fascinating. And when they start talking about what they were doing with these songs that they were producing, because they were running it like a factory. You know, it was, it was you know, you, you bring talent in one door and you, you refine them and you get them songs and you, you know, give them an image and then you, you send them out the door a star. I mean, that was kind of the, the, the idea of it. Sure. Very Gordy got the idea for Motown by working at the Dearborn Ford plant. And he thought the assembly line was so interesting. Raw materials would come in one door and a car would go out the other door. He said, I'm going to do this with people and music. And he did. And some of the things that, that he did and he discovered that were important was to start a song right where it caught you in like the first five, ten seconds. It just like, you know, you think think about the beginning of Can't Help Myself by the Four Tops. Dun 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 dun. Mm-hmm. That intro is more interesting than the whole rest of the song. It really is. Well, but it, it, it's catchy. Mm-hmm. You can't help but to tap your foot when you hear it. Dun 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 dun. And you know, uh what was the other one that was huge? Um, my girl. Dun, 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 different than the whole rest of the song. But just that hook at the beginning, and the song had to end right too. The song had to end correctly. If the song ended kind of on a downer, it was a bad thing. It had to end on the highest note that it possibly could. Uh, that was the formula. And I think that formula was used with, with a lot of top 40 music for years. And that formula is not around anymore because if you go through all your new music that comes through on your services, everything sounds the damn same. Mm-hmm. I will listen to it. I'll give it a few seconds and I'll skip to the next because it just doesn't catch my ear. It's, it's like the opposite of what it should be to, to, to really have that hook and that catch. I don't know. It's just different. Yeah, I, I, I could definitely definitely see it. I haven't, hadn't thought about it from that, that initial hook. I mean, not every song is Are You Jimmy Ray? No. But you know, they could be. But it's that, that thing, you know, that it's like, okay, that's interesting. I'll listen further. Yeah. And, and as DJs, and you can all relate to this, you get your promo only or your Topics USA or whatever you get, and you go through it, and you give the song a few seconds. You're like, at next. Yeah. Oh, goodness. That, that was from 90, uh, what, 92? Uh, when we would get those weekly discs yeah. from Top Hits USA, it was a, you know, oh boy, get the new disc and sat down and would listen to the whole thing. And Think about those songs that just grabbed you right away, though. Well, I, ma- I made it a policy. I had to listen 30 seconds, but you're so right that there were times but where... you had to force yourself to do that. Exactly. That's exactly. There'd be times it's like I would be like, I'm, a, I'm in 10 seconds, and it's like, yeah, next. Nope, I right. told myself because there's once in a while... There will be a gem that had I a grabbed you. Yeah, it had, had a that's a, that that that's a hit. But there there was very very seldom. So what we did at the time because we were we would get I think we were getting eight uh, sets of the discs. So the discs come in. I would listen to it and I would print labels to put on the discs and I would go through and listen and it's like ooh that has potential. If I already knew that it was it, it was charting, that would go on the label. And then if I yeah. thought it was, and it's interesting going back and looking at these even today. It's like. I was batting with my guesses and such about 50% on which ones were going to hit and which ones weren't. Yeah. Very seldom did we, if there was a song that did hit later, that we'd write it in with ink pen. One maybe out of one disc out of 10. Because after a period of time, 
you get kind of an ear for for picking up on yeah. what's what's going to work yeah. and what's not. And it was okay. uh, yeah, very so. So the staff back then would be like, so who does these labels? It's like, well, this is what I I do each each week uh, that they come in. Oh, how did you know that this song was going to be a hit? Because it was like, because I'm not stupid. And it's like you listen to it and you hear, <laughs> like it. I just hear it. And it's like there's there's something to this song. And you know, I think I think one of them was the Spice Girls Wannabe. Uh, it came out, and we were it was getting airplay. This is back when airplay in your area was a thing. Yeah. And Spice Girls Wannabe wasn't there, and it's like, oh, there's this is going to be this is going to be coming. Cool. Yeah, and it wasn't, but the video wasn't out, and the whole uh, the whole thing about the nips, the nipples, shirts, and all that kind of stuff that yeah. became the the. Have you seen the video for this? Oh my gosh, you couldn't believe it! Right in the bar. Yeah, it's like oh my. Yeah, wannabe was one that I I, I knew we were gonna hear. What was the other one that was like, oh my god, this is gonna be big? Um, Shovel wobba tump. Tub thumping. thumping. Yep, I remember. I'm when... like, this is, but the intro of that was weirdo, but it was the first track on, I think it was like October, November 97 or something like that. And I'm like, okay, I'll give it a second. Because you pop it in the car and drive around and listen to it, or I used to anyway, just to kind of get familiar with it. It's like, this thing is going to be huge. This this thing is going to going to happen. There's some that I really thought were going to be big, they weren't big. You know, mm -hmm. that, that happened. For some reason, I thought Electric Barbarella by Duran Duran was going to be massive, and it just wasn't. So you had that, too. But, yeah, some of them, um, it was like, oh, this is just too weird. It has to hit. Um, Get What You Give, New Radicals, was cool, I thought. I love that song, yeah. Um, what was the other one that was really cool? Your Woman, um, was it? Ghost, oh. um, o Town? Some. Yeah, something town crazy. No, not crazy yeah. town. Ghost town. I don't know. Whoever the hell they were. I'm White getting ghost town DJs and crazy town confused. White town. White town. Yeah. Yeah. White town. Your woman. That one was like, oh, this is too weird. It's like a, a sample from the 30s or something. Mm -hmm. Set up. This has got to hit because I like this. It's not even my, you know, my thing. New radicals is not my thing, but it had that hook. And you caught it right away, and it was like, yeah, this. This is going to be what, what's going to be big. Those days are gone. Everything mm -hmm. kind of starts off the same. So the and, uh, one of the songs that, that we like to talk about, because even, even uh, Lori, uh, she was DJing at the time, and Old Dirty Bastard came out with uh, Got Your Money. Got Your Money, yeah. And we listened. It came out on the di and it's listened to it, and it's like, oh, this is going to be a hit. And, of course, we played it in the yeah. bar and nothing. Played it in the bar and nothing. Right and and she had played it a couple of times because I'd put it uh, you know on the list of things that I think this is going to go. No, it didn't work for her right. either. So then we go to Vegas to Mobile Beat and and we get to Vegas and it's all over. It's everywhere in yep. Vegas. Yeah, and we get into the club and the club where they had the um, American DJ uh, party that night, and the you know the place is going and they start that 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 back uh, that drum beats going and an oh and then and then the bass kicks in and the people are just going crazy and come back to minnesota start hitting it again and now this time it's started to make airplay up here a little bit and people completely changed and it's like oh that's the greatest song ever it's interesting how it works i i remember <laughs> this was just a phenomenon that that i caught one time in my life and i i don't know I'll probably never catch it again or even care enough to pay attention to catch it again. But I remember in December of 2000, Daft Punk's One More Time hit hard. Mm -hmm. Like it was getting played a lot. And and uh, the other song that was getting played a lot uh, was uh, It Wasn't Me by Shaggy. Was getting played a lot at about the same time. Yeah. And... Uh, it faded away, right? And then in the middle of March of 2001, I went to Australia for a while. And I watched it happen all over again. New song by Shaggy, new song by Daft Punk, and they hit all over again. They got excited about it all over again. <laughs> you know, and like when I left the States, we were already doing Angel by Shaggy. And, uh, and I think we were doing like um, 
it might have been Digital Love by Daft Punk or something like that. So we had already moved on to something, but they were just getting, getting it there. there. That's and it was fun to, to see it happen twice. I don't, th I don't think you would have some of that, that happening today just because of our internet world and everything's being so, so connected. Because if you go look at the Billboard charts here compared to the UK charts, yes, there are some songs that are different, but mm -hmm. the big hit from Bruno Mars is charting here as it is charting there. Yeah, yeah, it works that way. Uh, unless it's one of those things that just doesn't cross the pond right away. I mean, for whatever reason, there's a lot of tracks like that that I can think of in the recent years that I'd, I'd hear in Europe and eventually we'd get them over here. Um, and a lot of that has to do with just publishing and copyright and the business end of things. Um, but I remember just because I used to get like the British. Now that's what I call music mm -hmm. compilations. Yep. And I get them when they came out. I had a friend over there who would send them to me immediately. So, so I'd have all of this, you know, it, it was music that it was just kind of happening there. Cause the nows were pretty much on top of things. So I think they did four year for the now series. I believe they were four a year. And, and so you get them quarterly. So they're relatively current, you know, yeah. And, and I would rock those in the car. I mean, you know, I did this probably for five years. I, I did this. It was the now, the now dance, and then some of the other stuff too, the, the Euphoria series, um, the Ibiza series. There were several. I've got, I've got a, a glass case full of these imports. They're really good. And there were so many songs that I was listening to in my car, like pulling up to work, and people were like, what in the hell is that? Can I have a copy of that? So I was like burning discs for people and they were listening to all this weirdo music <laughs> that no one else was hearing. And, and the one that I really liked was um, like Dirty Vegas Days Go By. Yeah. You know, I thought that was a really good song. And I think it was three years later, it popped up in a Volkswagen commercial and we finally got it. And it was the same thing with like Kylie Minogue can't get you out of my head. We didn't get that for a year and a half. I mean, I, I was listening to this fever. I had the fever album it was an import. But we, we didn't get it forever. There were so many things that we, we got eventually. And it's like it, it was so big internationally that we had to get it. Um, but there were so many things that we missed, too, and it was so unfortunate. It was, it was just a shame that we weren't getting some of this stuff. And to this day, I'm almost like, how can I introduce this to the American public? How can I show people this great music you didn't hear from back then? Because mm -hmm. there was so much of it for a while. Um, it kind of died off around 2010, 2011, and everything kind of started coming coming together. And now, if you look at the UK charts, a lot of our music is on it. Yeah. And the only thing on there, for the, well, I shouldn't say the only thing, but the thing that stands out on the UK charts is the UK rap hip hop stuff, which we wouldn't at all get, because because. Hip hop in Europe is big now, and but but they don't understand hip hop culture in Europe. If that makes any sense to you, yeah, I, I guess I could. I could They're see rapping that. in German, you know, about what I don't know and I don't care. But it's definitely not our urban culture, which is what the hip hop's really about. Yeah. So you go to Germany now and you talk to people; they're really into rap, and you know they heavy German accents speak. English is a second language, and you, you, you tell them something when they agree with you. They go, oh, yeah, yeah, true dot, true dot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just, it's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's cultural appropriation. We can't do that. Yeah, just... <laughs> no, it's hip-hop, yeah. Yeah, it's hip-hop, yeah. That's a school, true dot, yeah. <sighs> Let's see. We got a few more minutes here. Um, Ooh, we do, really? Yeah, we're, we've been. It's, it's been wow, we long. burnt time. Yeah, it's really going along. Next <laughs> week. We are going to be in Allentown. Yeah. It's coming up quick. When are you flying in? Um, I land. Let's see. I leave I leave Minneapolis. I just checked it today. Uh, I leave Minneapolis about 1 o'clock. Okay. So it probably is about a two and a half hour flight. And then with the time change, so it's roughly three and a half hours. So I'm landing about 4.30-ish, my guess, guesstimate, somewhere between 4 and 5 East Coast. How and, about the same? And then I think they, uh, then the, there's, someone's going to pick me up and... Otherwise, I'm hitchhiking. Whatever, <laughs> I'm okay with that. And then, uh, yeah, we got it. We have a sound check Sunday night, uh -huh. and it'll be fabulous. 
And sometime between now and then, I have to figure out what we're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah I've right. written it out. I've yeah. got my notes. I, I've written four different things. Mm. Yeah, it's one of those. It's like, you know, I wanted to do, you know, I, I did the, the Facebook marketing and I went through in very right. in depth. And I wanted to clean that up. And I've gone to, I'm actually, tomorrow, um, I, I've got a, uh, before I do these sem these seminars, I've, th I've done three different ones, two on DJ and TV and one in Chicago. I schedule a time to get an hour with a Facebook marketing person to go through the absolute most current things. I've got that going tomorrow. But there's a part of me that's like, okay, I could take some of that, but then there's some other aspects that may be more beneficial. Oh, I don't know. You know, John, and, and I, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, you've got a pretty interesting story with how you got into this whole thing and, and what, and, and being in Minnesota way up there, like you are and with the publication and with kind of, you know, going national, which you have, I think that alone would be a really interesting story for people to hear just kind of, you know, it really, it's against the odds that you're doing what you're doing, John, just, well, just because you, you know, and, and I don't, I don't mean that as a, yeah. Um, a dig at all no, it's, no, no. it's a prop I mean who the hell from almost Canada Minnesota becomes uh, a, a guy with a publication and, and uh, you know well known and respected all, all over the country for what you do I think that's a cool story well and that, that was one of the four things I was thinking about talking about is because this weekend there's going to be something pretty cool happening and by Monday there's going to be a complete new cycle of news for our industry hmm so it's like, yeah, I think, I think my, my talk is going to probably, my presentation is going to be one of these multi 10 minute or little segmented <laughs> that, that we're going to, yeah. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I gave it a fluff title and I love doing that. I love giving things fluff titles where people have very low expectations and then I can go in and I can, I can bring it up and get people thinking about stuff. Mm -hmm. So my, 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 uh, they kept, well, what is the exact title of your presentation? I'm like, okay, what do mobile DJs do anyway? And in parentheses, which I didn't tell them, this is the wedding edition. So I'm going to break it down. Mobile, you know, is, of course, you know, the ability to to move, you know, uh, at, you know, a relatively short period of time, move from one place to another, and DJ is to play music. Uh, being professional DJs, we're playing music for other people. And then we take that and we start talking about what music we play and what are the different ways that we can choose this music and what are the different ways that we can program and uh, you know play to our audience. And, and then we, we do that whole thing, which is the fun part for me. But then we start, well, what else do we do? You know, think about it. What else are we really doing? Well, we're doing event planning. We really are. I mean, whether... You admit it or not, we are doing event planning. We're putting timelines together. We're organizing things. We're telling people what works and what doesn't work. We can downplay it and say, well, I'm not an event planner. Well, yeah, you are. You are an event planner. And and you are also doing uh, back-end support. You are doing a lot of things. I'm going to talk about so all those things. All those and things. I'm also going to reach out to the audience and say, what did I miss? What else do we do? And we can expand on it and just kind of make it a conversation with the room. Mm-hmm. That's what I got. It's what we're doing, and I'm sticking to it. Excellent. I think it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I think that's, I think that engagement is, yeah. is something that's that's really, and that that's one of the reasons we wanted to have that chill room in February, mm -hmm. is so we have that opportunity to engage each other. You know, we yeah. can go and present. We can go in there and ch talk. If we, the chill room is a really it, good idea. Whoever thought of it was pretty smart. Yeah, well, that's what we were we were going to call it the Brian S. Red chill room, but then Jay Brandon's like, well, if he gets his it's own Jay room, Brennan's room, I want yeah. a chill room too. And so then it just became this thing. So oh, now it's, it's just our chill room. It's now, yeah, we're going to call it the lounge. I, it's it's the yeah, it's the lounge. It's the lounge. <laughs> so, but the, yeah, they that that ability to connect and talk, I think is is just. It's so much of, I mean, that's what we do these, we've done these shows up here. You know, the, the initial, uh, when you did your, your YouTube uh, DJ getting together, it wasn't to sit there and listen to someone talk. It was to share ideas, look across yeah. the table and, and do that. And there was some gear there and you guys could do that. But when I mean, it was really that, that one-on-one, -on -one, two, you know, two to whatever numbers 
a lot of it was just unexpected and random too. I mean, you had something in front of you you could do if all else failed, but usually things just happen. Yeah. Because there's so many things that kind of organically just come up Mm -hmm. and people have questions and people have ideas. And and that's really where ideas spark, you know, when everybody's kind of jamming and we're, we're thinking and we're talking, maybe we're just embellishing and having fun or maybe something comes of it. And it always, something always comes of it. And someone always says something like, why didn't I think of it like that? Or I've never thought of it quite like that before. That's interesting. And, and, yeah, it's a jam, and and that's how I do my my. I call them seminars. I don't call them that. I don't like calling them that or keynote or anything else. They're they're conversations. You know, I'm I'm not a lecturer. I can't do it because I can't be lectured to. I will tell you this: if there's anybody there who lectures, I will leave the room. And it's not because I want to be rude. It's because I really can't handle it. I can do about ten fifteen minutes of people talking to me. And then if I can't interject anything, I kind of freak out. My mind, my mind starts wandering. Mm-hmm. I'll start, I'll start thinking about things that are completely unrelated. I'll start, I'll start counting the hairs on the head of the guy in front of me because I, I can't do it. I will leave. So what I vowed to do is to think maybe somebody out there is like me too. I have to interact. I have to ask questions. I got to break it up. Someone else has got to, you know, if they have something to say, you know, say it. It's okay. You you can interject. You can ask questions. And and so I, I plan on making pauses to do that. Sure. And, and watching the audience and, and waiting and, and listening to them and having a conversation with them about it. So that's what I enjoy. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, and that uh, that'll definitely it'll be it'll be interesting to see how, you know, everything comes together with the DJ meetup next week because it is being done in a different way than a traditional. There's going to be yeah. some some flavor of traditional, but there's going to be some things that will definitely be a, a an effect of having a room with a hundred DJs instead yeah, of trying something new, five hundred DJs. And when you're in a smaller room like that, you can do things, you can engage people, and you know, from someone who's going to be speaking, I can go and I can I can literally talk to people and say, hey, you know, Brian, we talked about this on one of the shows, and da da da, and there can be that interaction, or right. you know, wh- whoever there. I, I enjoy to a point the smaller when we did our little conclave and we had twenty people, those were yeah. those were fabulous because they were small and intimate enough that you knew the people, and you right. could go back and forth and you could have those conversations. And instead of being a presenter, it was more like I was a facilitator. The only the only bummer about the small ones, and and I'll experience this next week. You know, I talk about bugging out. You can't bug out. <laughs> you can't hide in a corner that because is. you're going to be missed. Yeah. Because they, they, oh, where was, Brian was right there a minute ago. If it's a big show, it's like, oh, well, he probably went and talked to some other people over there. No, we're all right here. Where the hell did he go? Yeah. He had to go, he had to leave. We're going to stop everything oh, until Brian gets back. Everyone, please text him now. Where? <laughs> go find Brian. <laughs> where are you? We're waiting. Everybody knows exactly where I'm going to be. <laughs> so I'm going to be one of two places and, 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 well, three if you count the bathroom. Do we know if there's a coffee shop? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I'm hoping so. Well, the good news is everybody's going to have cars. So if we got to send people out for coffee it's a couple times a day, we can do that. Yeah, but you and I are the sad guys who don't have a car. So if they're going to bad well, coffee Yeah, but shops, Jimmy's got a car. Howie's got a car. Yeah. Owen's got a car. There'll be some. There'll Don's be some. got a car. We're going to be fine. Hopefully we need somebody, to get it. somebody knows what good coffee is. Well, I just need to go to a Target on the way there. And if there's a refrigerator in the room, I can just get coffee for the week. <laughs> Stuff uh, the refrigerator full of it. Uh, but yeah, man, looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you. We'll probably ride in together, I'm guessing. I some Yeah, I think that was the plan. I'm not sure you know, how if anything's changed with that. But we'll... I don't know either. We'll find out Sunday. We'll find out. This is, yeah. this is one of those things. And then uh, for shows next week... Um, we're going to be we're going to try to do a little live spot on Monday night just to give you guys an update, and then we're going to record a show for Tuesday night. Uh, with we're going to grab Ben Stowe. he is going to be there, and we're going to see if, they, if we can get the three of us together, and and we're going to take a list of world problems and try to solve them while nice. we're in Allentown. That's right. We're going to give the advice that will solve some world problems. And that'll be next Tuesday night. We will set that up to go live, and that will that will stream on the channel. It'll be pre-recorded, but it'll stream on the channel, so that way you guys can jump in and uh, kind of chat like you do in a chat room and such. And 
hang out and then we'll be uh, back the following week with our regular shows oh. yes we will oh, there's going to be K cups and Keurigs oh, Dave said there's Keurigs in the room I've got yeah, some got really fun. really cool K cups that we don't have a Keurig at home but I, I don't know where I got them from but I have like a dozen K cups that travel in my suitcase so I can actually I don't even know what those are those are those little plasticky cups that you know the the coffee the coffee maker punctures a hole in the thing and then, oh those yeah yeah they're no, not, the, not they're not the greatest thing in the world but I have some really good ones and I I had I I was at one hotel that had the machine and then they've been in my my bag ever since I haven't used them since then excellent it'll be fun. Well, let's wrap things up, Brian. Um, thank you guys for being with us tonight. We will again be with you next Monday live and then Tuesday in pre-recorded uh, with that. And if everything works out, you'll see those. And if it doesn't work out, we'll catch you the week after at a regular time. So everyone, have yourself a good evening. and We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.